Hi guys, it's Colette, and today we're going to be working on this stamped water marble using some bright spring colors. This is a technique I didn't get to last month, but I still wanted to give it a try. So if you'd like to see how I did it, just stay tuned. Starting out with clean, dry nails, I'm going to begin with a base coat. I'm using Ready for Takeoff, which is a peel-off base. And you can use whichever is your personal favorite. The colors that I'm going to be using today are from the OPI Color Paints collection. We've got Silver Canvas, which is going to be my base color. Primarily Yellow, which is obviously yellow. Landscape Artist is the green. Turquoise Aesthetic. And finally, indigo motif. You can see these colors are all right next to each other on the color wheel and I thought they would hopefully give me a little taste of spring since Minnesota still thinks it's winter. It's actually still snowing as I'm doing this uh, tutorial. But I'm going to begin with the silver as my base color. Next, I'm going to protect around my nails with Simply Peel, but I'm not going to do the undersides of my fingers like I usually do with marbling because we're not going to be dipping today. We're going to be stamping. And because of that, while the Simply Peel is drying, I think I'm also going to add just a coat of Yellow Stopper just to give my nails a little bit of extra tackiness and hopefully help with the transfer. As usual, I'm working in a 5 ounce paper cup filled with room temperature filtered water. And I'm going to start with two drops of that indigo just to get things going. Then one drop of each, repeat it all, and end with two drops of yellow. And I'm hoping that this is a good balance because. Uh, full disclosure, I intended to do some testing for this, and I never got around to it. So I'm just going on instinct and the fact that I've used these colors before. And two drops in the middle is just, I don't know if I want to call it a trick, but since I'm intending to go for a flower pattern here, drawing in towards the middle, that should help the yellow to not fully disappear. So now we're just going to go ahead and draw in from each side toward the middle and continue repeating that until we have a flower. that's pretty good. Now I'm using my Bliss Kiss stamper because it's my largest one but I've actually flipped the stamper head so that I have the flat side and that's for two reasons but I want to dip this before it gets too dry first. Um, I'm gonna just aim, try to get as close to centered as I can and it's a little bit at the edges you don't want that to fold back over on the design. But basically, this is easier than dipping in your nails. Kind of. Whoa, and I did get a big bubble on there. I think that's due to using the flat side. But you see, the design is still intact. So let me set this to the side here and move the cup. So... The reason that I decided to go with the flat side is partially because my rounded side has uh, it has some damage to it. I'm just going to try and 
kind of split this apart with this dotting tool carefully before it fully dries. It's already kind of dry. See, this is kind of why I wanted to do some testing first. Oh, don't get stuck. Oh, don't get stuck. Okay, here. I want to split this so that I can do it on two nails. That's not too bad. Anyway, as I was saying, I wanted to use the flat side partially because my rounded side of the stamper is slightly damaged and also because with the stamp designs that you let dry a little longer, I felt like the rounded side was almost making it more difficult to stamp, which is the opposite of like normal stamping, but this isn't exactly normal stamping. Now I've split this down the middle with my dotting tool so that when I go to stamp it on my nail, the whole piece won't stick. I should be able to get two out of this. So that's one little piece there. So let's uh, give this a try. I want the petals facing inward and I want to pretty much put the center of the flower toward the uh, center of my nail. If that makes sense, can you guys see? Then I'm just going to stamp and whoa there we go. This is a little tricky. It's a little trickier than I thought, I'll admit. Um, another one of the reasons I wanted to try it beforehand, but I'm pretty pleased with how that turned out. You really don't get too much of the darkest blue, but I don't mind that because I was really going for like the yellow and the green and the turquoise or teal as spring colors. I'm going to take this other half, and since it was a little bit damaged due to that bubble, I'm going to aim it on my pinky and kind of aim for the good part. And we'll do like this. And, ooh, there we go. You see, this is still a little tricky, partly because the water marble has gone and gotten to the sides of the stamper where it does not want to uh, peel away as easily as from the stamper head but that's just a little bit of a learning curve what I really like about this is that you can uh, get the flowers all facing the same direction easily as far as the cleanup I'm gonna take my brush with a little bit of acetone whoa oh no get apart the uh, perils of latex there. Take my brush with a little bit of acetone and break the edge of the, I guess you could call it a decal. It's, it's not quite, I mean I think of decals as like peel it up and then stick it, but if you don't do this, as I learned with the uh, veil technique, you are likely to pull up the design on your nail as well as the design around the edges, so after doing that, can easily remove the latex and have a clean design. So I'm just going to repeat that on my ring finger and then we're going to do another cup.
finally, one with no bubbles. Well, some little tiny bubbles, but that's negligible. And the last time you noticed I also peeled off this little bit of excess around the edge, and that helped with uh, the part that's dried actually to the stamper, not trying to interfere with the stamping. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again, which gives this, I feel like, just the right amount of time to dry. And I'm going to go ahead and apply this on my thumb. Is that? Yeah, like this. I don't think we'll go this way. And stamp. Oh sh Okay, that's that's exactly what we don't want to happen. Uh, is this Ugh. Well, that's just kind of a disaster. I think I must not have fully broken them apart and the second one tried to stamp at the same time or the second half rather so what I'm actually going to do is yeah that's dry enough I'm actually going to leave the latex on and where here we go. I'm going to repaint a layer of the silver canvas and we're just gonna stamp it again. Silver canvas is opaque enough that it will just make that mistake like it never happened. It's not quite as smooth as it originally was but it's workable. Okay, let's try this thumb again. It looks fully separated this time. Just have to uh, cross our fingers here. and stamp and I can see that that is not all the way to the edge of the finger that was my mistake looks pretty good other than that though but my remaining one still peeled up just a bit is this it's not quite enough to do my other thumb which is unfortunate I think I think what happened is caught my gap on the side of my nail instead of the side of my finger and the side of my finger went into the other part of my design now if you were just doing one finger per stamp this is not a problem that you'd run into either the uh, the naked spot or the ruining your second stamp obviously because you wouldn't have a second stamp to worry about but it's okay, we can fix this. We'll just do a little bit of polish surgery when we get to the cleanup. And, oh, that was a close call. That could have ruined the entire design. But uh, I think all I see is this little piece right here. I'm just gonna grab that and pull it off. Now we're okay. So, I, you know, it's, it's easier in some ways and it's trickier in other ways than just dipping right into the cup. I think I'm going to reserve judgment for right now. All right, so I still have to do some cleanup, but I want to do some polish surgery first. I've got a little bald stripe on the side of this nail. A little spot just on the tip there and um, 
I forget, a couple other spots. There you can see a little spot. So, I've got a lid. I've got the colors that I marbled with. And I'm just going to go in and try to make these spots a little bit less noticeable. Not necessarily like flawless, but just so that they're not sticking out there so obviously silver. So I'm going to start, I'm going to go in with some yellow. And then a little bit of green. A little bit of the turquoise. and a little bit of that darkest indigo blue and there you can see it's not i mean it's not matching the marble but it's just making it a little less obvious i'm going to do the same thing on this thumb here starting off with a little bit of the yellow then a little bit of the green And I'm just going to, like I said, fill in with those same colors so that it's not such a blatantly silver spot. I'm going to do that anywhere I've got some silver peeking through. And then I'm going to go in and finish up my usual cleanup with a small brush and some acetone. Finally, finishing off with a top coat, and today, as usual, I'm using Sesh Feet. So here's the finished manicure, and I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. I do wish that I'd done the testing beforehand because I feel like a lot of the problems I had could have been avoided. But on the other hand, this way you guys get to see my legit first attempts at a technique that is new to me and know what really, really to watch out for. Since I didn't record my right hand, I did want to mention this ring finger, which you can tell looks a little wigglier than the others. Uh, was due to stamping before the water marble was quite as dry on the stamper. So similar to some of the other non-image plate stamping that I've done lately, you want to make sure that that design is dry to the touch before you try to apply it on your nail, or you can have some slightly weird results. And you may also be able to see, or maybe not, it's pretty subtle, I had a little bit of a fold of the decal go over on this index finger, but I decided to leave it because it wasn't very noticeable and it was like the last nail that I stamped. So I decided to just go with it. And since these are jellies, it really isn't that noticeable if you're not me and know exactly what you're looking at. But this is actually the first time I've had my nails painted in about a month and I just haven't felt those creative juices flowing and I'm sure a lot of you guys are also artistic and you you know that feeling of kind of wanting to create something and just not having that creative feeling inside of you. I really want to thank all you guys for all the kind words that were left on Dude's Memorial video and all the understanding of why I kind of canceled Water Marble March. Um, it did give me a lot of time to think about, you know, the direction my channel is going, 
what other things I want to do, that type of thing, and ways to make it up to you guys for kind of bailing. And so I'd kind of like you guys' feedback on the idea of live streaming some of my water marble testing. If you would be interested in that, and if you would be willing to follow me to another platform for it. Because if I do decide to go the live streaming route, I am pretty much decided, not 100%, but I'd say probably 90%, that I would not be live streaming on YouTube, I'd be live streaming on Twitch. And there's a lot of different reasons for that. Um, you know, as a viewer, I kind of prefer Twitch, but also as trying still to make this my business, it makes a lot of sense to diversify away from YouTube. And there's also the kind of sad fact that I feel like my channel is really stagnating if not dying and that hurts me to say and my break of the past few weeks probably hasn't helped that but I think if I'm going to grow my my channel I mean it's still in relation to my channel and I would probably still upload the live streams to my channel after the fact but also growing my brand it makes sense to move to other platforms where hopefully some of my existing viewers will follow me and where I can also maybe find new viewers. So yeah, let me know if you'd like live water marbling where you guys could see what was happening in absolute real time and ask me questions right as I go along. Um, I don't know when this would start. Like I said, it's just something I've kind of been thinking of, but I'm, I'm leaning toward it. It's a new frontier. It sounds kind of cheesy, but it's something I'm interested in, and I would really like to know if you guys, my really tried-and-true trusty fans, are interested as well. So let me know down in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Even if you're not interested in live streaming, never worry that my tutorials are going away. They're not... I, I love sharing with you guys, and, you know, when when I have tough times, you guys are also a little bit of a support system, and maybe that sounds weird, but it's true. So, like I said, let me know down in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and as always, thanks for watching.